the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I read First Peter. First Peter verses three and four. Say, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Hallelujah. Beloved, I have good news for you this morning. If you have not known it, that there is a treasure that is reserved for you and I in heaven. I will get there. You will get there in Jesus' name. We will not just endure this hour. We will enjoy this hour, but not at the expense of our heaven in the mighty name of Jesus. God, our Father, has called you and I to a life of dominion and power. I repeat it. As a Christian, that God, our Father, has called you and I to a life of what? Dominion. And when we are talking of dominion, we are talking of the power to overcome. Power to dictate. Power to say, this is how I want things done. And that is how it will be done. We are talking of the use of power over something. Dominion talks about use of power over something. God could not create you and I as non-entities. I am a super entity. You are a super entity. That was why God took, he took the last thing of creation for God to create you and I. He didn't create you first. He didn't create me first. Hallelujah. He created all things that you and I will ever need to survive before he created what? Before he created us. So God did not create you and I as a non-entity. But we are what? Glorious entity in his hands. And remember, we are created in his image. Genesis chapter 1, verses 27 and 28 tells us again, God, he gave the command. He said, Let us make man in our image. He said, God said, Let us make man. So God created man in his own image, image of glory, image of dominion. Amen. Is that what they say? Hallelujah. Amen. Even those herbalists, those ones, they say, ah, they give homage. Pay homage to who? They say, the whatever that is above. That's God. So, the image of God is the image of dominion. The image of God is the image of bearing rule in whichever space of life that we find ourselves. Not to bear rule in some areas and we are midgets in some areas. Not to be, you know, to, 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 to showcase God's glory, God's dominion that is given to us, that is in us, in business, but in marriage. We are what? We are not succeeding. The image of God is the image of dominion and that's the image which God has created you and I all around dominion. Power over something. Power in business, power in marriage, power in career, power in ministry, power wherever you go, in whatever you want to do. God has given us that. God has made full provision also for us to live a life of holiness, which is an evidence of his power. Holiness is the evidence of the power of God. Ah, that man is holy. It's because people see evidences of God's word, dominion, of God's image, of God's power, manifesting in him, in her. So, holiness, like I said, is the evidence of God's power in demonstration. So, God has given us what? That life. Just as God's power saves us in the first place. It was not by your power, by your might, or by my power that I got saved. For so many years, I was wandering the street. 
I was doing on the unprint table. If some of us as pastors will stand before the pulpit and tell you what we did, what we did before Christ found us. Amen. Say, ha, ah, say, Pastor Shele, ye. Ah, Pastor, ah. Thank God for God's grace. The Bible says we are saved by grace. Through faith in who? Christ Jesus. So, just as God's power saves us in the first place, so God's power energizes us to live a holy life. We cannot live a holy life by ourselves. But the more we surrender to him, the more we acknowledge him, then the more the manifestation of the works of holy life, manifestation of signs of holy life, that what show in us, ah, that man is kind, ah, that man is good. Why? Because God's shade of goodness is manifesting in him. No man is good. Only God is good. So the power to live a lowly life comes through the knowledge of God who has called us. So the power to live a life of dominion it comes only through the knowledge of God. That means the more the knowledge of God that we have the greater our exercise of the power of what? Dominion. Amen. I repeat that. The more we know God, the more of God that we know, then the greater the exercise of the power of dominion, power over something, power over all things, the more that power manifests in us. That is why a brother be threatened by his sickness or by a witch and he stands up in boldness and says, what is it? Arant nonsense. And he will pray and he will reject and it will go. And there's another brother in the church will be threatened by a lower form of maybe witch or wizard. And the brother will begin the world, will become so, will become a jelly. It is symbol of the level of the dominion power of God that works in them. And it is a manifestation of our world. Much knowledge each of them has. The more of God's knowledge we have, the more his power works in us. And the more the power of God that works in us, the more the dominion life we live. The more the dominion life we live, the more we enjoy life. We are not called to endure life. Jesus didn't call us to endure life. John 3, 33, I mean Matthew 6, 33 Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his word right, and all these things will be added. Hallelujah. Amen. So just as God's divine power is the source of holiness so the knowledge of God is the word, is the channel. God is the source of holiness. No man can be holy except through God. Amen. Amen. So just as God is all of us, so the channel of that holy life is one through the knowledge of God. We must grow in God's knowledge. We must cease from being babies in Christianity. We must know what is written. That is how we can stand. That is how we can have ready answers to give to people who will begin to ask us questions. Amen. May the Lord continue to strengthen us in Jesus' name. Everyone here that is clinging before the world, may the Lord strengthen you domineeringly in the mighty name of Jesus. John chapter 17. John chapter 17. John chapter 17. I read from verse 1. Jesus spake these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Which hour was he talking about? The hour to accomplish what had been said even before the world began. That's why he said, he said, hour is going to say, glorify thy son, that thy son also what? 
may glorify who? Thee. Now, if God, this is what Jesus was praying for. If Jesus received, let's say God released 10 measures of glory on Jesus through that prayer, Jesus returns it back to God in million measures. Amen. That's what Jesus was saying. He said, he said glorify thy son, that thy son also what? May glorify thee. As you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is what? Eternal life. That they may know who? That they may know you. Jesus did not say that they may know me. In John chapter 14, verse 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the knowledge of God except by me. He said it in that John 14. In John 17, he said, that they may know you. Why? Because his appointed time had come. I think in John chapter 10, Jesus was speaking. Jesus said, Father, he said, I have the power. He said, I lay down my life for the sheep. And he repeated that by saying, I have the power to lay it down and to what? Take it up again. So it was not because of the Pharisees or Sadducees murdering Jesus. Mm -mm. Jesus freely what? Lay down his life. And that was why when they came to arrest him, so to speak, and the, the soldier, I mean, the soldiers came from the high priest, and one of the disciples drew a sword, isn't it, and cut off the hair. And Jesus said, "Ah, don't do that. Don't you know that if I just call for legions of angels from heaven, now they will come down." But he said, "No, I have the power to lay down my life." He said, "I have received this of my Father." And why would Father give that instruction to Jesus to lay down his life? Because of you, because of me, because of them. So that we can continue to live a life of dominion. So that we can continue to be his representatives in terms of subduing and dominating in this world. Amen. That's why Jesus came. So if Jesus had laid down his life for you and I, if Jesus had went through the horrible pains and all those things that he went through and you and I are saying we don't know him then how do you think God will be will he act and that's why the day of judgment will come and it will be a terrible day amen ah, may we not be subject of God's terror in the name of Jesus I say may we not be subject of God's condemnation in Jesus name so as we make progress in knowing him, we make progress in holiness and dominion life. In Luke chapter 10 verse 19 the Bible says that the disciples that were sent out came and when they came, what did they say? They said ah, master demons were subject to us at the mention of your name. Jesus told them, said, don't worry, your names are written but he said, I give you what? Power. That power is talking of authority. Authority to do whatever you want to do against the enemies, not outside his name, not in you, but through Jesus Christ. So a life of dominion is for you. A life of dominion is for me. A life of dominion is the one that mounts up on eggs like the wee goose in all ramifications. A life of a dominion is a life that is evidence of the image of God who owns all things, who can do all things. A life of dominion is an image of freedom. It's a life of freedom. A life of dominion is a life of joy. It's a life of peace. But if you have not known Jesus Christ, then you are not open to it. You have not plugged yourself to it, and you cannot turn from it. Amen. If you have not given your life to Christ, you are making a mistake. Give your life to Christ so that you can enjoy that life of dominion. Because that is what God wants for you and I. And that's what we will enjoy in Jesus' name. So God is the epitome of dominion. He has called us onto a dominion life. It is when we walk and keep walking in dominion that we show forth his glory. 
I repeat it. It is when we keep, when we are walking, when we walk, and we keep walking in the life that Christ has made for us, then that is in the dominion life, that is how we will do all. Our life will glorify his name. Amen. God wants to be glorified through. He wants people to say, yeah, that's God. I can see God in his life. I can see God in our marriage. I can see God in all about his things. God is present. That is what God wants for you and I. And this is only possible when we allow him to order our steps. We can only walk worthy of him when the Lord orders our steps. Amen? Amen. The man that was at the pool of Bethsaida for 38 years was trying to walk in his own steps. Abi? Because what was he saying? What was his confession? He would say, Master, for all these 38 years, each time I try to step out, I, that's him, him, in his power, try to step out. You say, somebody has stepped out ahead of me for 38 years. But that particular time, what happened? is surrender to Jesus. Amen? 38 years of stagnation was broken. Have you been stagnated in any area? The Lord will break it. As you allow him to order your steps, it shall be broken. In the name of Jesus. The same thing God did for Peter in Luke chapter 5. For over the night, Peter was trying to walk in his own steps, isn't it? He was ordering his own step. By Latin man, she. By by tie that net like this. No, fold it this way. You are not folding it correctly. The fishes will not come. Do it this way. Do it that. Amen. And for all the 24 hours, what happened? Nothing. But when he surrendered and he decided to let Jesus order his steps, what happened? He became a celebrity. Everyone here who have been working in his own step has said and it has been failing. As you allow the Lord to order yourself, you become a celebrity. You will become somebody people will come and keep rejoicing with in the name of Jesus. Let's stand to our feet. Father, Father, order my stay. Lord Jesus, order my stay.